Good evening, Chairman John O'Day, Vice Chair Monica Juhas, ladies and gentlemen of the County Board, elected officials, county employees, and citizens of Kenosha County. Before I begin my next to last State of the County message to the County Board and to our community, I want to remember our late friends, Twin Lakes County Board Supervisor Lon Winky, who unfortunately passed away earlier this year. The former Chairman of the Kenosha County Board, Gene Bellotti, who passed late last year after courageously battling various health challenges. And three former supervisors who also passed away in the past year. Robert Schneider, John Ruffalo, and Judy Rosso. Jean Bellotti was a friend of mine and a role model for the citizens and elected officials with whom he interacted. Even in disagreement, Jean was a gentleman respecting differing points of view and using cogent reasoning and calm demeanor to state his position on an issue or item. Then, after a contentious meeting, if one occurred, Gene would enthusiastically go out for a cup of coffee or a beverage with the people he had just disagreed with on the county board floor because he understood the importance of building relationships and disagreeing without being disagreeable on what's in the best interest of Kenosha County for the short and long term. Gene Bellotti was chairman of the county board during one of Kenosha County's most challenging times in history, the 1988 Chrysler Assembly Plant shutdown. His intellect and wit were a true gift during that tumultuous time. His efforts complemented our community's transformation to a diversified workplace with a future for our young people. Lon Winky, although only serving briefly on the county board, has been serving our Western Kenosha County communities for many decades. From being a realtor where he was a terrific promoter of, for Kenosha County to the decades of involvement with the Kenosha County Fair, Lon loved and cared about his community and was pivotal to the progress made on one of our most recent endeavors, Kenosha County Veterans Memorial Park. Bob Schneider, best known in recent years for his leadership of the Kenosha Community Foundation and as a former banker, served with distinction on the county board in the early 70s. He died this past fall. Judy Rosso served on the county board for four years, was an iconic businesswoman in Kenosha, worked with Meals on Wheels for 14 years, and her great, a great friend of the arts and her involvement in the Pollard Gallery and Rhodey Center for the Arts. Downtown Kenosha already misses her. John Ruffalo served on the Kenosha Common Council and on the Kenosha County Board with, as Supervisor Rose described it, passion and honesty. Both Judy and John died this year. All of these selfless people gave more in positive value to our community and to all of our citizens than their jobs required. Let's all pause in their memory. Ladies and gentlemen of the County Board, even after a year plus of COVID, every day great things happen in Kenosha County. If you haven't noticed, I'm kind of a cheerleader for Kenosha County. And it's easy when you have such a terrific team of employees who perform every day at a high level with professionalism and efficiency. This has not just occurred in this past year, it happens every day. 
our quality employees from every division of Kenosha County make a big difference. They have all pulled together to help accomplish what is our number one top priority countywide, getting vaccine shots in arms efficiently, safely, and with great dispatch. In a topsy-turvy year, our teams of employees have planned for rapid change and improvement in our services. The economic support program experienced a year of unprecedented caseload growth that with many changes in eligibility for policies and for programs due to the pandemic. The economic support employ employees applied all of these new policies quickly and successfully while also achieving the highest call center metrics on record. Our child support services collected $36.5 million in child support for families. That's the most ever collected in Kenosha County history. Collections to reimburse our out-of-home placements were also at the highest ever, collecting over a half a million dollars. Our employees have organized in new ways with many outside partners. Staff at the Division of Aging, Disability Services, and Behavioral Health Services stepped up and filled in as Meals on Wheels delivery drivers and with on-site distribution so that people in need received their nutrition services. And ADRC staff partnered with the Kenosha Achievement Center to provide grocery shopping and delivery to those who were limited in their ability to be out in public due to the pandemic. For 2021, ADRC is partnering with the emergency medical service providers across the county to focus on and reduce the number of falls in Kenosha County. Our employees have modeled the definition of nimble. They're tackling issues head on and quickly changing and adapting as needed. IT started 2020 with cybersecurity challenges that were handled. And that followed quickly by the challenges of the pandemic. It required changing everything they did to help all of us in the county do our work to meet the needs of the county residents. They quickly helped many departments deploy a remote workforce with each division offering unique situations and objectives. IT was a critical resource during the civil unrest, able to quickly assess and meet the needs for the Emergency Operations Center, also called the EOC, the Sheriff's Department, the Kenosha Police Department, the National Guard, and other state and federal agencies. IT continued to be a critical partner for the Health Division. They developed a robust COVID-19 website they work together with to guide COVID testing processes and now vaccination clinics. The application developed for vaccination appointments and their vital assistance in the smooth transition from the job center to the former Shopco building has been simply phenomenal. And they did that all quickly, efficiently, and with a can-do attitude and, and, and a positive attitude. Across county government, employees quickly pivoted, changing their methods of communicating with each other and with their clients. Reduced resilience on paper, or reliance on paper, while increasing speed and efficiency. Many customers had a higher participation rate because they didn't have to arrange for childcare or take time off of work or find transportation to physically be at our buildings. Instead, many more easily attended a virtual type of appointment or court hearing. Our employees lead, setting new benchmarks and priorities with timeframes to various stakeholders. The Division of Children and Family Services continues to lead the state 
and the southeastern region of Wisconsin in its work in Child Protective Ser Services Unit. They continued to promptly see children in the community and investigate allegations of child abuse and neglect throughout 2020, even with the challenges of the pandemic. They achieved a rate of 97% in completing initial assessments within 60 days and made timely initial face-to-face -face contacts with these cases on, at a rate of 93%. The overall state rates were 68% and 80% comparatively. Project Permanency, a partnership with the District Attorney's Office and the Circuit Court to move children to forever homes was slowed during the pandemic, although 54 children went from foster homes to permanent homes in 2020. As of March 31st this year, parental rights were terminated for 20 children in foster care, freeing them to be adopted into safe forever families and another 35 children in foster care cases have cases pending in court with a projected plan of being adopted by their loving foster parents. Brookside Care Center and Willowbrook Assisted Living have had to do and continue to do a tremendous job of orchestrating the management and delivery of services th during this pandemic. They've had to juggle federal, state, and local requirements. We appreciate their love and grace, both staff and residents, through these challenges. Our employees have coordinated complex logistical plans. Our facility staff was tested at every juncture, and with every new challenge, they rose to the occasion. They had to plan for the constant cleaning and sanitizing of public areas, quickly adjusting schedules and hours. Additionally, they were among the frontline response teams during the civil unrest to secure and clean our campuses. They worked hand in glove with law enforcement and the highway workers to get the fence up and to board up buildings and to repair buildings, which is still ongoing. Our human resources team was key at every level. As we transitioned employees to work from home, and while we worked to retain some normalcy for those many employees who could not work from home, they have worked to get our vaccination clinic staffed with employees and volunteers, along, along with coordinating the training that was involved. The Emergency Operations Center, the EOC, headed by Lieutenant Horace Staples has juggled countywide responses to both COVID-19, which is still ongoing, and the civil unrest. Many individuals, organizational organizations, and other branches of government were coordinated through the EOC. The Division of Health has excelled on every level during these months of constant strain and a high volume of work that hasn't seemed to slow down. They've had a plan, implement, and constantly reevaluate policies and procedures as the situation required. <coughs> they continue to work with multiple partners at the federal, state, and local levels. Businesses and leaders across our county, I am just so very proud of all their work. And I would be remiss in not acknowledging the personal, and professional toll often experienced these past 13 months by all of our county employees and their families. Our workforce has continued to perform at the same high quality and with the same strong commitment to the people of Kenosha County, despite sometimes overwhelming physical and emotional challenges. I sincerely thank them and applaud their efforts. As you can see in the 2020 closeout report, they did all of this while keeping our financial reserves intact. Ladies and gentlemen of the County Board, we've kept Kenosha County government working for our community and made sure our vital mandated services were delivered when many Kenosha residents were in need. 
This past month, employees have been redirected to our number one priority in Kenosha County. Get as many Kenosha County residents vaccinated as fast and safely as we can. And our numbers show to date that we, in fact, are getting the job done. To date, our county clinics have administered nearly 45,000 doses, but the mission is not over. And it is my sincere hope that I will see you all this fall back in the county board chambers to deliver to you the 2022 Kenosha County budget. Our numerous infrastructure projects in Kenosha County, including County Trunk Highway S expansion and County Trunk Highway H improvements in Pleasant Prairie are moving forward on schedule. And soon final wrap up will be completed on County Trunk Highway F. Our infrastructure improvements have been critical to many economic development wins all over Kenosha County. NASCO, a packaging manufacturer relocating its headquarters and flagship production operations from Gurney to Pleasant Prairie. Geneva Supply, a distribution warehousing and marketing and fulfillment center bringing 100 jobs to the town of Randall. It's in the former American Girl Doll, or also known as the Old Gander Mountain site. Kroger is now putting their customer fulfillment center which is now being constructed in Pleasant Prairie and that'll bring up to 700 jobs in the next three to five years. And Stabio, North America, cold processing foreign parts is expanding from its Bristol location to the Salem Business Park and growing from 50 employees to 85 jobs with room for much further expansion. The, fin the financial state of Kenosha County is very strong. We are double A plus and doing all the right things to attain a triple A rating. Furthermore, the overall long-term obligations is $24 million less than when I took office in 2008. Standard & Poor's in its latest review of our finances noted our strong economy our strong management with good financial practices, very strong budget flexibility with maintenance of reserves of approximately 30% of expenditures over the past three years, very strong liquidity with strong access to external liquidity, and rapid amortization of debt with 85.9% of debt scheduled to be retired in 10 years. Think about that. Rapid amortization of debt with 85.9% of debt scheduled to be retired in 10 years. That's just a tremendous financial place we're here, we have here in Kenosha County. But wait, Fitch goes on to say, Kenosha County's economy has become more diversified over the past decade. Our operating performance is at AAA Kenosha County's ample financial resilience is derived from its broad revenue raising flexibility, solid control over costs, and substantial fund balances. And the county's independent revenue raising ability is high. 2020 presented many fiscal challenges, but Finance Director Patricia Merrill and her team and the Kenosha County Finance Committee of the County Board has done an outstanding job staying ahead of the curve. We did it as a team and we came out of this financially well off. They managed a constantly changing fiscal landscape from ICE pulling the inmates from the County Detention Center in March leaving a potential four million dollar financial hole to making sure they were monitoring and tracking all COVID-19 costs. Through it all, Kenosha County has maintained a fund balance of almost 30%, even through a pandemic. And I also wanna thank the citizens of Kenosha County 
for how they have navigated this year, which brought them challenges, frustrations, fear, and too often, losses. Let's also recognize and thank the businesses, the nonprofits, various organizations from churches to restaurants to hair salons to food pantries. This has been a year like no other. I pledge that Kenosha County government will continue to work with you and for you. I pledge too that Kenosha County will continue its commitment to diversity and equity for a better society for all of our citizens in Kenosha County. We will finish strong in dealing with this pandemic and I am confident in Kenosha County's future. And this is all possible because of our employees of Kenosha County. We have quite a team here in Kenosha County and we still have a lot of work to do in 2021. And I look forward to working with each of you as we work through this stage of the pandemic, keeping the goal in mind of making Kenosha County an even better place to live, work, play, and raise a family. Thank you all for your doing. We're gonna be working hard over the summer together. Thank you all and may God bless Kenosha County.